Hello once again, ladies and gentlemen. This is Graz bringing you another episode. And you're probably wondering why I have the crafting table up. It's going to be a pretty easy answer. I'm going to show you how I craft the bottles. As you can see down here, I've already made a few potions. Oh, good lord. Will you please excuse me while I take care of a small matter? Phew, okay. Zombies are such a pest. But anyway, I'm going to craft bottles. As you can see down here, I've already made some potions. They're quite simply easy to make. It's just like simply like making a bowl down there. One, two, three. That's all it takes. Three little glass panes gives you three bottles. All right, you know what? I've had just about enough of these zombies. I have had it. Where are you at? Die! You stupid zombie. Who else wants some? Eh? Oh. Oh, yeah? Take this. Stupid monsters. Oh! These guys are out of control. You gotta be kidding me. All right, which one of you did it? Get up here. Which one of you did it? Where did you? Where did he go? Was it you? Yeah, I bet it was you. Interrupt my speech. You want some? Come get some. Here, how do you like them apples? All right, where's the other one at? You want some too, do you? I didn't think so. Ooh. Don't interrupt me ever again. Alright, now that that's been handled appropriately, we'll have to address this some, at some point. But, uh, back to what I was getting to. Alright, now, we've made our glass bottles right here, as you can see. Simply three out of three pane. We're going to take them over to our brewing station and simply put them right in here. But we can't do that yet right now because we don't have any kind of water in them. Next step up is going to be the actual cauldron. You really don't have to make a cauldron, but it does hold about a bucket's worth of water. And since I don't have a bucket at the time being, I'm going to craft that too. So first things first, here's our bucket. Ta-da! And we're going to actually need more than that for iron. Roughly eight bars, I would say. Maybe seven. It's going to be in a U-shape. Kind of like the boat was a U-shape with wood. See, there's our cauldron. So it's about seven iron bars. We'll make that and we'll place it in the house. Where can we put the cauldron? I know. Cauldron will go here. Simple enough. Now, back in, in a previous patch, I really don't know because I, I don't remember offhand, but back in the day, you did brewing out of the cauldron. Since then, it's been patched, and all the cauldron does now is hold water. Oh, you stupid, stupid mobs. Urgh. This is getting completely out of hand. I am losing my patience this episode. That thing blew up my tracks. This is so getting out of hand. So getting out of hand. As I was trying to say, it used to be where you brewed your cauldrons. Now it's been fixed. So you need a brewing table or a brewing stand to actually do it. I am going to have so much work to do now because of all this. I so hate creepers. Ooh. This is going to be my nerd rage episode. I can see it coming. Any more? No? Okay. get back to full hunger. Now them hearts can be replenished. And we'll go from there. I'm not going to use any of my potions for it. 
So here we go. One bucket. Cauldron's full. Now the cauldron full of water will actually fill three bottles. So of course, one, two, three. There we go. You have got to be kidding me. So anyway, we're going to place all three bottles here. As you can clearly see. The heating rod that's on the stand has actually heated the water up to turn to a reddish color. We're going to use some nether wart as our base. Why nether wart? Because, quite simply, nether wart is pretty much the basis of anything major. So we're going to use some nether wart. As soon as I open the stand, there we go. You have to click on the base to actually get it to open up. Nether wart will be into our typical water bottle. Now this is going to create what's called an awkward potion. Awkward potions really don't do anything. There's no real use to them. That's kind of where you have to add a reagent in to give it some some feeling, I guess you could say. Give it some kick. See, there's our awkward potion. No effects. So what I'm going to use is going to be this magma cream that you can get in the nether from flames, basically. Put in the stand. Now what this is going to generate is going to be fire resistance. And now if you're doing a lot of trip, trips in the actual nether, fire resistance is highly needed because it's going to help you fight ghasts. It's going to help you basically anything fire related. As you can see, our potion has now changed color and it's actually resistant for three minutes. Now what I'm going to do to boost the longevity of it is put one redstone in. Now redstone, I believe, lowers the potency but increases the longevity. So that's where we get the actual eight minutes. So with that, we'll have that put in there. And as soon as it gets done brewing, There we go. Potion's done. Fire resistance for eight minutes. Makes a whole world of difference, wouldn't you say? There we go. Well, there are so many more different recipes out there. I really don't need an extra set of these, though. But as I was going to say, there are so many different recipes out there. Check out MinecraftWiki.net to figure them all out. I don't really have the time to go through them all here. There's a lot of recipes. You can make poisons, you can make slowing potions, you can make haste potions. You know, there's like so many different varieties. I could probably do a video just on the different sets, which may not be a bad idea, by the way. So, you know, we'll see how how things go. So I'm going to get situated here, and I will rejoin you again shortly. All right, I'm going to do a little something different right now. You could probably call this the crafting episode, but I'm going to break down this blaze rod into blaze powder. As you can see, it simply creates two blaze powder from one rod. Now I'm going to actually use this ender pearl, which I had a plenty of, with one blaze powder to get the eye of ender. Now the importance of the eye of ender is of course to find the actual stronghold in the overworld. Now the one thing I have seen is that you can't use this inside a building without it disappearing. It renders the materials moot. It just vanishes. So we're going to go outside. And what's going to happen is this thing's going to show us the direction of the nearest stronghold. Oh, skeleton over here. He's got to go first. We can't have him ruining everything. Okay, there we go. So we'll set up the Eye of Ender, and then we're going to throw it up in the air. And there's where our dungeon's located, our stronghold, rather. As you can see, it floats a certain way out, and then it just drops. Yes, by the way, that was a chicken in the building over there you saw. I'm actually using it as a breeding ground for right now. I'll go back at one point and show you what I did. But right now, this is just a simple demonstration of how the eye actually works. Now, you'll actually see me use this more in a future episode as we try to locate the actual stronghold. But for now, 
As you can see, there we go. This actual eye is leading us in the general direction of the stronghold. Now, how far out it could be, Lord only knows. We'd have to be going for quite some distance. As you can see, the eye continues to lead. And now the eye has actually evaporated. So, okay, that's actually a first. So that kind of renders everything a moot point. Which leads me to a very good tip. You should probably get your coordinates to where your house is located on the overworld. Oh, stupid creeper. Stupid, stupid creeper. Just in case, should you ever get lost, use the X and Z coordinates to pinpoint your house. That way, if you're ever lost, you simply go back and you follow those coordinates back. Nothing too major, but just figure a little FYI, should anyone ever have any issues. You know, why not? It's an educational show. Why not? It's educated me in a lot of things. Thanks to the viewers, that is. So, back here, yes, there are chickens in here. There are plenty of chickens in here. There are three chickens in here. Four chickens in here. That's, I thought so. Basically, if you get some wheat, you can lead them back here. And I've actually had breeding going on. Now, whether or not these eggs yield any kind of chickens, we'll find out. Nothing. Okay, so let's get out of here without releasing these guys. Now, this isn't what I intended the building to be. Oh, what do you know? He dropped an egg. Two of them. Oh, look at that. A little chicken. So now we have five of them. Okay, this isn't what I intended this building to be. But for now, it, it, it serves a purpose. So if these guys will let me out without them running away as I have no weed on me, they're not going to let me go. By the way, in case you didn't know, the little chicken's going to follow the bigger chickens around. Get out of the way, you stupid fowl. Yeah, it's the only downside about having this set up, I guess. There's always going to be one bird that's going to be stuck right by that door. Usually if you have wheat, you can lure them away, and they'll come quite easily. Okay, so that didn't yield anything. Hmm. Smack it. That's right, get away from the door. Oh, get away from the door. Thank you. Alright, I'm going to demonstrate by getting one wheat. Or you know what, I'll demonstrate by getting a couple wheat. I will demonstrate how they breed. Just a quick, simple farming. We'll gather material. <coughs> then we'll go back and feed them, in which we'll see the breeding process take place. At this point, I'm not going to go in with it out because then they'll notice it and they'll come after me. Now watch. Now I have all their attention. I can lead them anywhere. So, we will give you and you. You will now breed. You and you. And now we are having a ton of chicks. Well, three of them. As you can see, we can't feed them any more wheat. So that's it for the time being. And now that the wheat's gone, they are all going to wander around. So we're going to have a, uh, plenty of chickens in there. So that's pretty cool. It'll take some time to breed them more, but you know, at least we can say it's been done. Great. That's it. Go to the door. Get in there. Now we have roughly eight chickens in there, so that's pretty cool. Once again, something new has been learned, and a food source is plentiful in there. Should we ever need the need for meat? Alright, well, so much for that. Alright, 
before you see me fight the flame without using any kind of resistance potions or anything, this time you're going to see me actually use a fire resist potion. Here we go, I still got plenty of time left. I'll give you a quick demonstration of how much easier the fight becomes. As soon as we get one of these guys to spawn, which shouldn't take too much time. Any second now. Oh, there we go. As you can see, they can throw their fire around, but it doesn't really do anything to me. I may have simply lost a whole heart from the fact that he touched me, but the flames do nothing. So with a fire resist potion, I could pretty much sit here all day and farm these guys as soon as they decide to pop out. That makes it so much more simpler. And now I'm sitting here farming experience as well. So later on when I get my next sword out or whatever, I can probably put a nice, pretty nice enchant on it once I keep building up. But yeah, I can sit here and just flame, uh, farm flame, uh, blaze rods, excuse me. I could farm blaze rods for roughly seven minutes, easily. Because I'm going to hit these guys, they're going to keep backing away, and I'm just going to eat their flames like it's nothing, thanks to the potion. Okay, here we go. Simple fix. A new sword, profit, and blaze rod. Simple enough, right? So once you get those first couple blaze rods, you can really start to make some progress with, you know, your actual adventuring and everything with potions. Okay, now we got two of them. Oh, we got three of them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, this one's supposed to be part of the experience, so let me get out of here real quick. <laughs> get back here. See, there we go. Uh-oh. Yeah, I think the only thing you really have to worry about then is when they start touching you. Other than that, nothing to worry about. Alright. Let's put a quick halt to them real quick and let's fix this arena. And then I'll continue on with the actual demonstration. We still got about five minutes left. Oh look, it doesn't work. Okay. Well, like I said, either way. I may be on fire, but as you notice, I'm not even losing any kind of health from this. So it's pretty cool. Every time I hit them, they just back away. I kill them, and I just profit. Keep my hunger up. And I've already gotten five blaze rods. So this is going to help me down the road with any kind of materials I may need. And I've already got a couple at the house. So it makes a world of difference. Potions truly are the way to go once you get to this point. They just make things so much simpler. Oh, okay. And like I said, just worry about the touching, that's all. Even though that sounds kind of bad. It is kind of funny that the way it comes down to. And as I'm sitting here doing this, I'm watching that thing spin in the middle. And I notice it's like a timer. It tells you when they're going to spawn. So that's pretty cool in itself. So he's got himself trapped in there. Now watch, I'll go to get the one, and this guy will spawn. Oh, okay, he did spawn. Thought he was dead, and he's still back there floating around. We'll have to put an end to you. Yeah, we are so going to have to fix this at some point. Well, anyway, this has been pretty much a demonstration of what goes on once you get the fire potion and you get the protection up. i still got 3 minutes and 30 seconds left, and these things are like posing no challenge right now. As you can see, as long as I don't even touch them, their fire does nothing to me. Oh, he went back here. You know what? I'm not dealing with you. You can come to me. Uh, you can come to me now, would you? Oh, knock it off. You're stupid. Alright, so if we can get another one to come out. About two minutes left. Okay, we got three of them to spawn. 
<laughs> yeah, you guys can sit there and spit all your fire you want. Okay. Not one damage in the world. Until you take fall damage, that is. And these guys are chewing my sword up. Alright, so let's just kind of call it a day with these guys. Unfortunately, the only thing that kills it in this area is the actual pits back there. Other than that, I've still got two minutes left. I've gotten eight blaze rods and I've took minimum damage. The only real damage I think was done was probably from the sword. So, these guys will probably continue to play around back here. Maybe I can get him. Okay, I'm done. Well, so much for them. Stack up some of these empty potion bottles. I've already used one, by the way. And yes, when you use these, you can actually walk through lava. So that's pretty cool, and yeah. Now, of course, if you walk through lava, it's still going to show you as being on fire. But it's, you're not going to be taking any damage. Just be careful, because you don't want to be walking through it when the potion's going to be running out within a minute or so. Because then that's where you risk killing yourself, because the flames will still persist. The flames from lava will persist for a little bit of time. So just remember that. And just remember, once you get the first couple rods, you know, make that stand and get them potions because it's going to make your life so much easier. Unfortunately, I didn't get any flame cream or blaze cream. But, you know, you just got to keep plugging at it. So I'm going to skip out of here because Lord knows you can get lost in these things so freaking easy. And I uh, will rejoin you again shortly. Okay, well here we are back at the entrance for the actual nether fortress. And so far you've pre seen pretty much a compilation of all the other stuff I've been talking about. The making the potions, the, the this and the that, and what I've got going on back home. What I'm doing in the nether fortress, how to farm blaze rods from the actual blazes themselves. So, it hasn't exactly been like a typical episode of Minecraft. Kind of almost like a giant version of uh, Minecraft Pebble. So it's been pretty neat, and I think it's been very informative. Giving you guys a heads up of what I've learned and what's going on here. So, what I title of this episode, I have no clue. Now, getting to this actual fortress here, that I, that's been skipped, has been a little bit of an adventure, because there's been so many of these freaking actual... ghasts, excuse me. The ghasts, they've been everywhere, so... Sounds like we got another one floating around here somewhere. That's why I recommended earlier you actually build your bridge out of cobblestone. The cobblestone actually withstands the explosion from the, the gas. So that way you're not out in the middle of a lava pool getting shot by a gas and falling into the lava. Plus having them potions makes them fighting so much easier. But as I stated, you know, once you go along the x-axis, if you're still looking for that first one, you go along the x-axis, and you're going to keep looking around until you find one like I did over there. Then you build over to it. Then you can go north or south from that one fortress, and you'll continue to find more. So anyway, that does it for that. At some point, while I continue to farm the fortress, I will have to begin finding the actual stronghold in the overworld. Because there is the end portal, which we'll have to use the Eye of Ender to actually activate that portal. But before all that gets done, I'm going to have to actually upgrade my suit of armor again. Because I don't think iron is going to cut it. Thanks to some adventures here, I lost my diamond suit. But, you know, after a while, you die so much. I actually kind of laughed when I died. I should have recorded it, but it happened right after a recording. So, you know... But I will go around searching for more diamonds and trying to get my suit back as well as the diamond sword and pick because those are pretty much integral at this point. Okay, I didn't even have my potion up. I really didn't take any damage. 
My iron suit is taking a little bit of abuse, but at this point in the game, it's pretty much a mute point because I can easily go back and farm more iron. It's everywhere. So, I think that's going to be it for here on this episode. I may rejoin you back at the overworld. Alright, once again back through the portal, back in the overworld, where things are at least somewhat normal. At least when I'm not getting attacked by giant spiders and endermen and zombies and skeletons and whatnot. So that's basically what's going on with the nether when we come back from the nether. What do we got, a skeleton around here? Oh, look at you chilling under the house, trying to stay out of the sun. You know, I actually have 11 experience, so it's going to be a pretty good return on an enchant. Of course, I'm running out of food like there's no tomorrow, but i still got plenty of mushroom soup left. I actually want to show you now a trick. A trick with the netherrack. I'm, if you've been in a nether, you've probably gotten a ton of netherrack before. You've probably found yourself coming back. But like, right, what am I going to do with all this? Well, I'm going to show you a trick. Some of you, probably most of you by now, already know what's going on with that. You know, it burns for eternity, you know, whatever. So, I'm actually going to show you how it can be a useful thing back on the overworld. As you can see, my house is covered with torches. So, what I'm planning on doing, I'm going to save some torches. There we go. Well, I'm going to save them, not lose them. They fly all over. Anyway, I'm going to use netherrack in place of the torches. Just like so. And then, using flint and tinder, I'm going to make a brand new torch. Since this burns forever. I said I want to make a brand new torch, and I build more blocks. Hmm. Well, I did manage to set myself on fire, so I guess that's some kind of some kind of comedic value, right? There we go. Alright, well I did manage to do something right here. There we go. Get up there. There we go. And as we see, this flame will burn for a very long time. It will not be put out. Now, if I could find some way, mainly this way, to go up here and put this one on fire. There we go. Good enough. I didn't mean to hit that out. Stay. Voila! New torches. And they will last for quite some time. Should burn brighter than a regular torch. You know, and there we go. It's simple as that. Now, I can actually recollect some of my other torches and just simply use another rack in their place. Looks a little funky, yeah, I know, but, you know, what can you say? Now it looks like my house has a raging inferno. And you can't go wrong with that, right? I'll leave that torch in place because I don't want to... It just makes more sense there. Believe me, I, I don't want to start anything over there. So I'll leave those torches alone. I have glowstone over here as a little bit of a lighter. And I'll have these as pretty much, you know, blazing inferno. So there we go. Should keep the place pretty bright. Of course, my chickens still want to get out. That's too bad because they're stuck there. And I'll just continue to walk around here. Replacing all the torches. And saving bricks. Because you never know when another project arises and you'll need the bricks. Get up. There we go. Just a little bit more brighter now. Makes the world a, world a little bit more uh, brighter place. So, let's see how it looks from in here. Eh, whatever. Good enough. So I think that's going to be it for this video, ladies and gentlemen. It's mainly been a bunch of demos and how-tos and whatnot, but, you know, we'll come back with an actual adventure episode soon enough. So I hope you enjoyed it. I thank you for watching, 
And I'm going to have my new saying. Have a wonderful day. And if not, then fake it. Take care, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.